Look at this report. It is uh, from uh, River State, where unknown gunmen are wrecking Avox too. When they talk about unknown gunmen, they wanted you to believe that unknown gunmen are members of uh, ESN or IPOB. That is completely untrue. For now, the like the name bandit, eh, or adsmen, as they are the creation of the Nigerian media, giving them live. What is going on right now is that, like the Boko Haram did in northern Nigeria, there are those killing the policemen, the security forces around. This. They are they are doing it in eastern Nigeria now, because the effort I told you is to ignite a civil war in Nigeria from the beginning of 2022 so that, uh, yeah, the agenda of a genocide in eastern Nigeria, in Biafra land, can be carried out. So they want you to believe that uh, unknown gunmen are the ESN members, but it is untrue. Because see this unknown gunmen of a thing, these are actually terrorists eh, that are under the cover of the Nigerian military. Nigeria DSS, but they are using Nigeria media to tell you unknown gunmen, unknown gunmen. How many, many of you are used to it now? Unknown gunmen. Oh, thank you, oh, unknown gunmen. You have no idea of what is coming. But well, let me show you something. What they did in River State. ESN, they are blaming. Abby, are you going to tell me that ESN went to uh, Willy Wicke's state and they started killing policemen? Use your head. Now to River State, where the killing of some security personnel has left some residents in shock and fear. Nine officers of the Nigeria Police, Air Force and the Customs Service lost their lives when gunmen attacked four checkpoints in Equity local government area. It is the latest incident in a wave of violent attacks on security agencies in the southeast and south-south regions of the country this year. Correspondent Uchi Okoro reports. The end is not in sight to the circle of violence in the south-south and southeast region. Security personnel are now targets of mindless gunmen. Few meters away from the Port Harcourt International Airport is the first joint military task force checkpoint that was attacked on the omagwa Elele stretch of the Port Harcourt Oweri Expressway. Eyewitnesses say three police officers and one Air Force personnel were killed here. That day I brought food. I came late. I brought food to them. They, even the one they caught his head, if they check that place, even the food that man ate did not digest. Some of the food came poured on the ground where his blood was there. So I'm, I'm the person that used to give them food from point to point. As the entire state grapples with the shock caused by the killings, residents of the area are in need of reassurances that their communities are safe. The poop two soldiers guide the kid. They are not even married. It pains my heart that the, the parents release their, their children for government to go for work. At the end, what they are receiving back is their dead body. So anything the government will do to stop this, let them do it. The exact number of Nigerian customs officers manning this second checkpoint at the time of the attack at Ubima Junction is unclear. But three of them were gunned down by the assailants who also cutted away their service rifles and patrol vehicles. We are here when the group of men come here, young men with the black dress, the dress black like a mafia. So with their rifle. So when they come here, they surrender the custom. Many business owners and customers say the many business owners and customers say they barely escaped as the sounds of sporadic gunfire filled the air. The way the bullet was stand itself, you can't stand and recognize somebody. You understand? The people would go, would go with the full force that he cannot withstand watching at them. So why one of us ran away because of the fly bullet? Eyewitness account puts the death toll from the attack on this third checkpoint at two, one police officer and one Air Force personnel. At the fourth checkpoint, no one was killed, but property belonging to officers and civilians were touched. 
All four checkpoints are within 20 kilometers of this axis of the expressway, requiring about 15 minutes to drive from the first to the last. But the gunmen operated for two hours with little resistance, raising questions about existing strategies by security agencies for communication and reinforcement. The police says an investigation, a full-scale investigation has been ordered. But we <laughs> police investigation. I shut up. That uh, video report uh, was from the TVC. So thank you for sharing that with us. For those who have been following the uh, modes of operation of uh, Boko Haram, right? They are mostly interested in killing security agents because they have guns, so they, they can take their guns. Then they would then, uh, what do you call it, burn down everything that they found around that they can't take away with them. That is the mode of, the mode of operation of uh, Boko Haram, right? And you see the firepower they are talking about. People believe that right now those who have received different different uh, uh jihadist training military training they are being given military uniforms and they are now they've sent them all over everywhere to infiltrate everywhere you see the manner of terrorists everywhere in nigeria right now they are so 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 much that you can't even differentiate what from what because they are all known by government how are they moving their weapons people are asking how are these guys moving the weapons undetected? DSS, the Aura Secret Service, they came out a few days ago. They wanted to come and alert us. Imagine Kono Drinker, so this, this uh, jihadist uh, apologist, too. DSS, the Aura Secret Service, they came out. They said they discovered an intel that uh, ESN, IPOB, that they are, they are moving bomb from Lagos to the east. That's their own intel. Maybe Nashekau gave it to them. Do you understand that? Very, very dirty people. Dirty in mind, dirty in soul, and they care less of how many lives is lost or are lost. It is the same mode of operation. Boko Haram. Look at the those Fulani terrorists. It is the same mode of operation. And when they are operating, nobody can interrupt them. They, they are never arrested. Forget it. They can spend hours operating. And then there will be investigation. Forget it. When they need weapons from the military, they will attack the military base. They will take everything they want to take. The people who discovered IPOB moving bomb to the east, they couldn't tell us how those Fulani terrorists massacring people in eastern Nigeria, in western Nigeria, in all this forest, how they got the guns. They can't tell us. But they can tell us who is going to, uh, who is going to use revolution now to overthrow government. They can tell us all those nonsense in the, in the interest of national security. How, how, how classy is that? Eh? And this one came out. Who is also probably working for them now? So unfortunate. Unwa Zurike. He said he is also attacked by unknown gunmen. Unwa Zurike. <laughs> then he actually confessed to a crime. Simply because he wanted to tell us that some, yeah, what do you call it? Unknown gunmen came to his house. If you hear unknown gunmen, please, let me tell you something. Killing of the policemen, killing everybody that they are doing right now should be condemned by everyone because it is a trap. When they finish killing them, unknown gunmen, they will tell you unknown gunmen, they have ransacked the village and they have killed their 50 people, 60 people. And they will say, she will not tell you. Maybe you are clapping for unknown gunmen when they are killing policemen. Now they have killed 40 people now. They will now start making you think, ah, uh, maybe it's the ESN. Don't be daft enough to be clapping for something that is purely. There's no amount of people these guys can sacrifice 
just to push that agenda, make it work, and convincing enough. You should be smart enough. Applauding them without thinking about how they operate. Looking after, look after when they leave. Look after the same. And then you can have your picture of those who are killing people in eastern Nigeria. Those who broke into the prison. Eh? And the rest of them, they are those armed by Nigeria. Given guns to, given uniforms to, and they are given the operation to continue to wreck this havoc. They are doing it everywhere. And one day, you are going to read it in the news. Unknown gunmen killed 40 people here. And you'll say, eh? Hey! Then you start telling yourself, oh, unknown gunmen, God punish you. So unknown gunmen are full and he has men. Oh. Then you come back to what my ego is telling you right now. Nobody should tell you to be complete. I'm not saying there are no people who are upset, you know, in a way, enraged, and they're taking their anger out of uh, the system, right? But if you completely believe that uh, unknown gunmen are the, uh, you know, angry Igbo youths, then you have no idea of what is going on. Because the intention is to let you believe that so that they can then carry out another attack in their name and pin it. So all of you who are tweeting, tweeting, thank you, unknown gunmen. Thank you, unknown gunmen. You know what they are doing? You are setting yourselves up. And you would come back here to tell me, Mayegun, you said it, Sha. Ah! Mayegun, you said it. Unknown gunmen has killed five people. Why are the unknown gunmen killing people? Are they not supposed to just kill? Then you will now come back to what I'm telling you now. The intention is actually to get to that. Then start the genocide they wanted to start in Eastern Nigeria. Do you, do you get that? The new one, Zurike. Uwa Zurike is also. Watch this. I've seen on, on my night downs. I slept here. I didn't come into this place this morning. Show them. I come from. You sent your tag wag men to attack me. If there is anybody that should know me better, it should be now the camera. When I opened the radio for you, you started using it to castigate me. You came to do your traditional marriage in Nigeria. The, the wedding I gave you money to, to do. I was the person that gave you 450,000 naira to marry. To get your wife to do introduction and all that. But when he came to Nigeria, because you were castigating me, you told your sister, who is in the police up to today, to organize mobile policemen for you, to give you security, to provide security for your wedding. Your sister brought all panel of uh, mobile policemen and carried the wedding ceremony with the crowd, with everything, all the security men, SSS men there. They were there. I sent my men to arrest you. My men came to the gathering in the presence of the so-called mobile policemen. Came to the high table where you were and took you out put in the car and brought it before my presence in Ogwe. I kept you for five days just to teach you a lesson that was really bigger than your thing. I never intended to kill you. He actually confidently confessed to a crime of kidnapping, keeping somebody against their will and wish on their wedding day. He's bragging about it. He confessed to a crime simply because he wanted to what? Link Nam De Kano to unknown gunmen that came to his house to attack him. And he wanted to show that he's a big man. I am a big man. You should know me better. I have my boys. You know, what the hell is that? How does that help an average Biafran that has been profiled, could be killed anytime, 
he could be prosecuted for something he never did. And there, his offense is simply because he's a Biafran, he's, a, he's an Igbo man. How does that change that? Then he confessed to a crime. A crime that if uh, a country is working, that alone right now, it should be arrested for kidnapping. How many people has in Wazurike kidnapped against their will and wish? He has a big house. I don't know what he does for a living. Do you? I don't know. And I think uh, because uh, Namdikanu didn't go back home to go and collect enough money and build himself a palace, you know, a big one. Like a typical rich Igbo man, yeah? You know what they do when they are rich? Because they didn't go back there to go and live off uh, the people's money. Unwazureke is bigger. Is that not what his position is? And yet, his brothers and sisters are, are still being hunted down on their ways to farm, on their way to stream, on their way to markets, on their journey within their own uh, land. They are being hunted down, killed by common animals. And that never really brings them together to unite them to say, but they would rather, you know, they would rather go that route. But it's not going to be about him tonight. So unfortunate. There's something that can actually get you really upset. To let you have an idea of the type of people that you are dealing with. And why the politicians in southern Nigeria eh, are not there. Because of, we all know they are not. But do not listen to all their excuses, their threats. They are those making those threats of war, of this and that. They are those making those threats. And they are those hating and abetting all these terrorists too. Because if they are not, how can you not all see this? How can you all not be bold enough that the, uh, over, over 60 million people that make up uh, where you come from, if they say they are not safe, it is your job to take it up enough and challenge those who will continue to promise you or continue to threaten you because of a, a political office. It is your job to take it up with them. But they won't. But we will. And that is why I have an idea. This kind of people. Baeza belongs to Jigawa. The oil in Delta belongs to Jigawa. As long, yes, because we are called Nigeria today. So that's what I'm telling you. The oil belongs to us all. And we as Nigerian shall do everything possible to make sure we take that oil so that Jigawa people will have the oil as well. We'll have the money of the oil. Anybody who thinks the oil of Bayelsa belongs to Oli Bayelsa is just deceiving himself. As long as we are in Nigeria, we will make sure that we have uninterrupted supply of oil so that there will be uninterrupted supply of money to Jigawa State. As long as we are called Nigeria. So of course we are not the same people. We have to understand that, look, I am a full animal, and his oil is different, Yoruba is different, but then God has made us to stay together. So why can't we attempt to stay together? And I honestly do not mind, even if we're going to part ways. Let's sit on the table, around the table, and I agree that look, that oil of Bielsa, Jigawa cannot have a share. No way. You know, I don't mind us talking like that. But as of today, that oil, we shall do everything within our means, everything with our blood, to defend our oil in Bielsa. <laughs> we will do everything possible to defend that oil in Bayasa. It belongs to Jigawa State as well. You know, so that, that's what I want them to understand. This country fought civil war. And that's probably why we are still together. And anybody who threatened, unless if we are defeated, then we can leave the oil. But if anybody threatens the flow of oil, we shall fight and make sure oil flows. Ijo oil. Bayasa oil belongs to Jigawa people and we shall do everything possible to defend our oil in Bielsa because God put our oil in Bielsa just like God has put in the resources of Bielsa in Jigawa. Bielsa belongs to Jigawa. The no joke. 
and they mean it. They will do everything, including their blood. Are you ready to do everything? For the generation coming after you too. Maybe not, right? Don't worry. It is going to be a natural call. And the, the deep will call on the deep. People will discover themselves. And then they will change it. It said, if, except if you defeat us, the oil in Bayelsa belong to Jigawa. Except if you did. But until then, that means you have to fight for it. <laughs> you have no idea of people you are dealing with. Some of you don't. Or maybe you do, but you still don't have how deep it is. They have the power now. He made this statement, you know, just before Bukwari became president. So this is not a new statement. He didn't make it yesterday. So don't make it look like it's a new statement. No. This is the mentality. Now they have the power. Now you understand why they will kill everybody to keep that power. Liz, Liz Chuku, at Mayegun's Diary Politico, have you considered interviewing Iben Baloway? He has some very interesting things to say about Nigeria and Boko Haram. I am open to bring anybody on. You see, let me tell you something about uh, Mayegun's diary friends. You see my fans that you see here. Many, many of you have been with Mayegun for so long. I kind of have uh, radical fans. My fans have a way of thought that is comprehensive. And they can easily tell you if something is completely off in, an inter I mean, in, a, in a guest. And I do struggle. I have to say this openly. I do struggle to at least make uh, my guests as comfortable as they can be. My friends, uh, they can be very hostile if they feel like you are wasting their time. But yeah, you all know all these uh, great speakers out there. Just tell them that my Egon's Diary uh, fans, mm, these, are, these are deep thinkers. And there are many. So yeah, it's welcomed. Because if, you, if he comes here, and uh, it, became, it can become our darling. You know, my friends are easy to, to be friends to as well, right? And they are watching me, right? So, yeah, that would be great. Liz, I don't know him or her, and then I don't know how to actually reach out. But if you do, please reach out to me through the email. I can follow it up, okay? Thank you so much, uh, Liz, uh, for that. Uh, yeah. And a quick one. Remember I told you, this is uh, about uh, those who sponsor my Egon's Diary Political, this segment tonight, uh, Send Waves. Thank you to those of you who have responded. I received the data today. Uh, so disappointing. I'll tell you. So the data came back after our first week of me telling you that I am now in a partnership with uh, Send Waves. And you, as well, can also benefit from that where you can send money to your uh, loved ones uh, in Nigeria uh, without any charges. And at the same time, they can collect the money in dollars in Nigeria. So the way it works is that, uh, you know, you, they will get uh, an automatic, uh, what do you call it, automatic uh, domiciliary account opened for them. The moment you send them money, that, you know, the money goes straight to that uh, domiciliary bank account in Nigeria. So if they have an account with a GTB, Access Bank, uh, you know, you can send money to them and they will receive that money in dollars in Nigeria. Somebody said, Mayegun, uh, you know, you shouldn't uh, let, let, let them come and tell us about it. Stop it telling us about them uh, because we don't want your... Come on, guys. This is a bigger platform now, all right? Partnership, sponsorship will help us grow too. And it will make me better too, right? So the statistic came back that uh, only... This is shocking, right? Only four of you actually used the link to download this video. That link is in this video, in the description uh, of this video, yeah? Where you can download the app, set it up, right? And you can send money to anyone you send money to every month or every week in Nigeria. And the fact that it's going to be in dollars, it makes it better. That means you don't have to worry about the uh, exchange uh, rate or anything. You can change your money anywhere you want. You can change it in a bank. You can change it outside the bank. You can put money in this account if you are abroad, right? And you do go back to Nigeria. So instead of you having to send money to people to keep money for you, 
You can save money in that your own account in Nigeria where it's going to be a domiciliary account. You withdraw your money in dollars. All right. Now, if you get uh, to download the app, your first transfer on the, on that app, you can use this. Use Politico as your promo code. Politico uh, will give you five pounds. Will give uh, the receiver of the money you are sending. Will give them five pounds, five dollars uh, extra in their. I mean, what do you call it? In the money they will receive. This is good, and I get commission whenever you use that link and you download the app and you use the promo code. Only four people use the promo code in the last few days. Thank you to every one of you who trusted and believed in Mayegun uh, to that point of uh, following it up. It is free to send the money to Nigeria uh, using this app, and you can get your money in, uh, you know, that's, that's actually what I love about it. Go and change your money where you want, all right? It's up to you. Uh, finally, tonight, I want to close this conversation with uh, the response of Adam Baka. You all remember that uh, Garbage Shew, Garbage Shew said, Father Mbaka came to come and beg for contracts. That was why, and since they didn't give him the contract, that was why Father Mbaka started criticizing Bokwari. <laughs> Father Mbaka, first, let us pray. And I'll tell you what he said after that. That chain that is holding Nigeria will break in this night in Jesus' name. If we must be one Nigeria, let it be one Nigeria. If we cannot be one Nigeria, let us divide. Ho -ha! I repeat it so that when they begin to misquote me, catch me right. Those who are coming to arrest, get ready to be arrested too by the heavenly powers. If we have to be one Nigeria, let it be one Nigeria. But if we cannot be one Nigeria, let us divide. Although he is a charlatan, all right? But again, with what we have seen so far in that contraption Nigeria, any attack on uh, Umbaka is an attack on the South. You know what I'm talking about? So he responded to Gabit Shew. And this is what you have to say. Nigeria, Watch. that if you say the truth, you will be attacked. We survive the attack of the crocodiles who want to eat the fishes in the fish pond. Because all those who are attacking the men of God, they are crocodiles. But God is ready for them. I'm not discouraged. I have been waiting for them to challenge any of the things I said. What they call it in philosophy is the fallacy of ad hominem. Fallacy of mere argumentum ad hominem. You allow the truth to be hidden. Then you started attacking the, the person who said the truth. You don't attack the messenger. Challenge the truth. Whether there is insecurity or not. Whether there are good hospitals in the country or not. What are you talking about? How God has loved us and saved us from Corona. And our leaders, some of our leaders are becoming the Corona we are suffering from. What are they talking about? Are we not hungry? Is there employment opportunity for the youth as ought to be? The money they are packing for the election, if they use it to build industries, shan't our youth have places to work? What are they talking about? And when they talk about the giving for a back contract, I don't want to talk about that because I was laughing. It's a laughable childish accusation whoever is saying that is a, is a shame to himself and shame to the people he's representing father mbaka's voice came from the spiritual so what i'm saying is unchallengeable 
why I had been silent, I was waiting for them to change. Until God said, speak. There are some messages that like dew, some are like green, but some of them are like thunder. Anybody who is challenging that message is challenging the God of thunder. And should be careful. The Fadambaka who was speaking is not just a priest. But by the special grace of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, under the Holy Ghost anointing, is the job provider. Yes. To the glory of God, those that are benefiting from me every month, direct salary owners, are not less than 23,000 people. So, if I can be paying not less than 23,000 youths, giving them food, direct workers, I mean direct workers, not indirect. My packers and loaders, I pay them every two weeks. And I thank the governor for giving us the enabling environment. That's why you should be praying for Father Mbaka. Amen. That's why I was crying over Ugoyama. It's a death trap for all of us who have investments there. Oh, ye do I call. Oh, Mary, oh, name It's a long song. I'm going to get the full, full. Uh, I'm going to get the full clip for it. I've always wanted to share it. I've been looking for where I'm going to chip it in, and uh, you know, or like this one that uh, you know, guys actually mixed up for uh, Marzi as well. Quite classy. Listen. Yeah, do you know how to <laughs> Listen very clear. <laughs> Listen to the minister. <laughs> minister of Defense. Plan. Minister of Finance. Somebody that studied the Sharia law is the head of the judicial system. Is it very clear to you now how they look? This is a lot of story for me. Federal capital territory, Fulani, agriculture, Fulani, police affairs, Fulani, aviation, Fulani, communication, Fulani, power, Fulani, water resources, Fulani, government, everything is Fulani. All the 19 northern governors are full of it, except the Benue of my Tutram and Kodu. Every northern and every other, apart from four, the rest are all full of it. Is it very clear to you now, Harry? This is a lot of people. Because full of it have a game plan. From the word go, their game plan is to dominate and subjugate you. Dominate and subjugate you. Where is their president from? Full of it. Chief of Staff, Fulani. Chief Justice of Nigeria, Fulani. 
Senate President of Nigeria is Kanuti of course is Fulani. Deputy Speaker is Fulani. The Army Chief of Staff is Fulani. Navy Chief is Fulani. Police IG is Fulani. DSS is Fulani. National Intelligence Agency is Fulani. National Security Advisor is Kanuti of course is Fulani. Minister of Defense, Fulani. Fulani. Minister of Finance, Fulani. Is it very clear to you now how you This is the Logical Republic. Federal Capital Territory, Fulani. Agriculture, Fulani. Police affairs, Fulani, aviation of Fulani, communication of Fulani, power, Fulani, water resources, Fulani, government, everything is Fulani. Every government, if you are apart from four, the rest are all Fulani. Is it very clear to you now how they do it? This is the logical republic. God have mercy upon us. <laughs> Logical Republic, man, that that Mazi, Mazi, that that special case. Oh, this is a beginning to make sense. Like, why would you want to belong to the Zoological Republic? Are you not seeing it? Even in the zoo, Mazi Namdikano, he was being charitable. A zoo that some of some people found insulting. It's actually so much compliment. It's, it's an insult. Some Nigerians are feeling insulted that they call Nigeria Zoological Republic, right? But it's actually a very good compliment, right? Because a zoo, I've been to zoos. I have been to many zoos in this country. And I've been to zoos many times too. Well, maybe not many times. So, But I've been to zoos many times. If you, if you have been to a places more than two times, that's many. Abi. Anything more than one is many. And I can tell you that the zoo I have been to, they are well and more organized than the zoological republic. Maybe the logical there, zoological, is the difference. Where charlatans, opportunists, are promising citizens good life that are still in free. We will work with you. To build a Nigeria that is not corrupt. I bring you a message of hope. We are going to spend a lot of resources on education. You don't listen. To, see, people are saying, Mayegun, are you? An activist, are you a freedom fighter? I'm like, me, freedom fighter. Me that I'm supporting those who are fighting for my own freedom too. Do you understand that? Freedom fighter, okay. I am just here to rob mine with you so that I can have friends in you and you too can make other friends so that we can be friends of like minds, intelligent, sensible people that cannot be manipulated. The decision to Jump out of the ship of uh, sinking Nigeria is up to you. I can't even force you to do anything. I wish I had this magical abracadabra like a Nigerian pastors. You know, even my friends will love it. If I can say, uh, you know, place your hand on your device right now. I want to touch you. Mayegun's, uh, Mayegun's electric shock power heaven is about to touch you there. If I have such power that I will make everybody just say, I did you. Well, you know, when I will be talking, people will just be crying, oh, my ego, oh, my. Then when I touch you, just say, oh, my ego, thank you. I wish I have such power. So I can make you agree that the only way to heaven is to break away from Nigeria. Imagine that if I have such power. I don't. I wish I do. I know, you know, something that can make me just say, you watching me right now, receive. Oh yeah, when you leave this program, right? You must begin to preach the gospel of Oduduwa Republic. Say amen. And you say, amen, sir. Amen. And people will be doing it. You know, if I have such power, I don't. Imagine the kind of power, the, the kind of power that the likes of uh, Mazinam the Kanu have. It is called the people's power. Eh? If Mazinam the Kanu start talking differently to what this 
Biafrans want to hear. They go tear him into pieces. You go believe say nobody the same name the canoe. So he knows that he will speak for them. In the process, they are ready to listen to him. He can, I don't have such. I, I can't even. Well, I've got friends that help me, Shabo. Maybe I don't even know if I have that power, right? Maybe one day. Eh, maybe I will have such power and I'll just be like, uh, you know, this big. Don't make me look like that. That you are seeing uh, 1,000 people watching my ego. Don't be deceived by that, too. I have friends and they consider me a teacher. They don't care how young I am. Do you get that now? I have that privilege. If you are watching me for the first time, you might be surprised. How come people are listening to me? What's going on? It's because they consider me a teacher. Okay? But there are freedom fighters. There are teachers like us. It's our job to direct people to the right path where they can indeed think critically instead of uh, criticizing blindly trying to make a point out, out of what they have no idea about so teachers i'll be teacher maybe you should call me teacher teacher mayegun or just call me mayegun whatever it is see people fighting for all our freedom that's how all of us want enter want entering go eh? we go entering you see even kuiki is fighting for my freedom that's why i'm supporting him anybody fighting for our freedom so don't say mayegun are you not a freedom fighter about uh, don't feel disappointed though because as a day so too I would rather go behind those who are ready to say, yeah, because we have a lot of people who are ready. I don't care about their age. I don't care about their, uh, what have you. Leaders are, they say leaders are born. Some said leaders are made. It doesn't matter. Leadership is responsibility. There are people who are made for that. And we have seen them. They have, you know, they have exercised such a kind of a trades. So don't mix it up. All right. Don't mix it up. We are all we are all fighting for ourselves. You fight for yourself. I fight for myself. I fight for the generation coming after me. Once we now form an army of those who believe that something must be done and changed, then it's going to happen. It's going to change. Do you get what I mean now? That's where I am, and I'm happy. I'm happy with that. My friends loves me for that. I have a news for you. In April, I told you about the Age Nigeria Foundation, Abby. Now um, I have this old clip they sent to me. It was from last month. It is just a reminder to say to all of you that uh, I am so proud to call you my friends because I never even thought we could do that that much. So you donated over 600,000. In fact, from the last figure I had, I just thought I should tell you, this is the beginning of new month. So from the last figure I had, we raised over 645,000 Naira for Age Nigeria, whereby instead of uh, giving them bag of rice and all of that, they have something called the food box. It's amazing that with the dignity and respect we treated the aged, the senior citizens in uh, uh, Yoruba land, especially to uh, the Age Nigeria Foundation Committee, I mean, you know, uh, management, they have done tremendously well that they deserve more of our support. I just want to bring this up as a reminder. People have been asking me, Mayegun, how far with the Age Nigeria? We've not heard anything about them. How are they doing? They are doing great. And this should serve as a reminder and for those of you who might want to reach out to them again, they are doing great. Honestly speaking, I wish I wish I, I, I can just commission some guys to go down there in one of their programs, yeah, where they are, you know, doing all of this with for the uh, age, right? Just have guys go there with a better, sharper, cleaner camera and cover it for us. And I will bring that back to show you. Your money work, though, if you don't know, those of you who gave uh, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, 100,000, 180,000. I even asked somebody who gave 185,000. A lot of money. Your money worked and they sent me this. It is the tradition of Age Nigeria Foundation to celebrate our elderly on international days. To be able to interact with their peers for the purpose of preventing loneliness and depression and be feasible in our society. To celebrate them on what Earth Day, the President of Age Nigerian Foundation engaged them with a lecture titled Preventive Health Care and Independence in Older Age. She also engaged them with wellness exercise. This we do regularly with older people to keep them active. Building a fairer, healthier world for older people is this year's team by WHO and uh, it will be our guide on earth for other people 
this year. Age, Nigerian Foundation and other people in Odogolu Ijebu, Ogirire must show a deep appreciation for your full support to our program. We sincerely appreciate Mayegu General, Olushola Badero, and all his followers who donated to our food bank project in Odogolu Ijebu, Ogirire Mo Ijebu Ode, Abeokuta in Ogo State and Lekki Orile in Lagos State. We supported over 250 other people with food box as we commemorate World Air Day on April 8 and 9 in Ogere and Udogolu. Over 200 other people were served with hot meals as we hope to sustain meal on way for other people. Your old age will be more glorious. You will spend your old age in quality life. Thanks and God bless you for supporting Age Nigeria. Thank you so much uh, to every one of you who reached out. Your money worked. They ended up uh, giving this box to uh, this uh, food box, right? They ended up giving that to over 500 senior citizens in more than three locations. They are not just giving food. They are also working with these elderly people uh, where they check on them every now and then. They do some uh, physio and all of that with them, exercise and all of that, talks, group meetings, and all, they do that with them. They give them, uh, you know, some uh, basic uh, medical supplies, uh, you know, that takes care of them uh, after, uh, you know, examination. They buy wheelchair. So if you have a lot you can do for them, not just money, reach out to them. Their contact uh, is uh, going to be shared. I'm going to try and get that up for you. For those who wants to reach out to them, okay, it is so straightforward. Use the hashtag Mayegun fans, hashtag Mayegun fans uh, support. I mean, support. Reach out to them and we will continue to be grateful to you. Every penny you give is putting a smile on somebody's uh, somebody's face in their whole age. You are doing great. We are doing well. Thank you so much, every one of you. We won't take calls to have a calls tonight. We'll take calls some other time, right? And that might be tomorrow. So everyone will stay back to this point. Thank you so much for your time. I'm going to see you again tomorrow. Until then, remember this. If Tefunumbu want to go to Shokoto, to go and live there, he is most welcome. But that we are getting to the Dua Republic or asking for the Dua Republic doesn't mean that we are going to send him out of Lagos. He is still a Yoruba man. Even if he denied his truth. That he is from Iragbiji in Oshun State. Change his name. Change his uh, parents and all of that, yeah? He is still a Yoruba man. We won't deny him. Okay? And for all of the atrocities they've committed, Yoruba people will decide how we are going to deal with that. But if uh, Tinumbu is so scared that the same Yoruba, Yoruba land, that is had his ajele everywhere for 22 years, he is afraid to live in that Yoruba land. If Nigeria break, he should go to Shokoto or Kano. All right? It will be safer there. Until we see again, eh? Stay safe and don't forget, give me that thumb up before you go. I mean, come on, mm -hmm. please. So give me that and uh, click on that subscribe button if you haven't. You can even become my premium member. I mean, premium member of my Egun's diary. If you don't want to be seeing adverts or what have you on my Egun's diary videos, be a member, be silver, gold, you know, whatever. Or just subscribe. It's so easy that way. I've got a shop under my video. Some of you never really visited that shop, but some of you do visit the shop. Mayegun shop. I've got some lovely designs there that you can put up, like DRI, Mayegun, Africa. You, there are so many lovely stuffs there. Go look at them. I've got a company that prints and sends out Mayegun's merchandise from Germany. You can patronize me there too. Every support is a support. I'll see you some other time. You stay safe and have a good evening.